No, I gotta go get a wedge. That thing is sitting straight up and down. Yeah, it's actually settled back. I have my other wedges stuck in another tree. And this one settled back on me. So let's see if we can get it to go over. Ooh boy. I'm going to go back and get another wedge. Alright, so this is actually a video worthy moment. Um, if you were to look at this tree, the lean is favorable. Well, you're going to ask, well, then how come it settled back? Well, because we're down in a hollow. And above us is a fairly stiff breeze. And this is another reason why you want to have enough hinge. Yeah, we're having an ice storm. First one of the year. So instead of going out in the woods and working, I think we're going to stay inside today. Yeah, that's ice. Not snow, it's ice. You can see the tree is now beginning to, even though it's getting blown around, the ice is beginning to build up pretty good. There's probably a half inch of ice on everything, including the road. I haven't seen a car go by in quite some time, actually. So. Let's see if anybody can figure out what's wrong with this picture. See that wire? Somebody actually intentionally put that wire behind the bar there. So how do you get the body off completely? And, yep, that tire was pulled and put back on the wrong spot. And it's also a broken screw in there. And this was what was holding on the cow catcher area, the front there. So, this was the light. So this poor little thing that probably started its life sometime in the 50s, maybe 60s, has been worked on. So one of the missions will be trying to fix all that and get it back to life. Look at this thing's bent too. So yeah, we're going to pull that wheel. Let me pull that screw out of there.
now a workspace has been developed and construction operations will commence a couple of projects. This one right here was kind of interesting because we ended up pulling off a wheel, had the grind on this cheesy wheel puller gotten on eBay. Yeah, it's cheesy. Had to grind the ends on it so it could get around the wheel. And uh, pulled off one. I had to use heat to straighten that bar. Brought it out and put a torch to it. Get it nice and red hot because it had caved in uh, on the very top right here. It's hard to show. But was able to bend that straight. And we were able to get the uh, broken screw out of the threaded hole. Uh, salvage bits and pieces that was the game maybe I'll show a little video of this thing running around in circles because we got it running the problem we had with this um, was when we put it back on the smoking element had shorted out and it was short to the body so it was a dead short from pickup smoking unit to body back to, to ground so uh Working on solutions for that. And this one right here has a broken valve timing rod. So bought one of these for like seven bucks on that. And then maybe I'll run this one today. But there's a lot of projects. There's the little marks to get some revisions. So took this one off, it was broke. I'm not sure I can fix it. I can try to solder or some other form, but I think it's broke for good. This was cheap enough. This one was cheap enough anyway. Like seven bucks. So now the question is, does this thing run? I know that one does. So you put the body on it, and then it shorts out on that. So I have another one of these coming. Part of the issue with these is they have a, a little element. And these are replaceable, by the way. And that's the heating element that sits inside. And on this one right here, the wire that went to the outside through the top of the dome right here had worn, in the, or the insulation had worn shorted to that so when you put the body on it would short to the body so it wouldn't go so i think i'll have this thing uh i'll show a video of it running around in circles because the motor on this thing runs good my wife put in new brushes and greased it and all that kind of stuff so let's see if this one runs. well needless to say it didn't run so there's other issues i found some parts kind of laying on the inside of the shell so the first thing I want to do is see whether or not track voltage, which is, is getting up to right here. And that tells me that the rollers are picking up juice, but it's not getting past the E unit that I know of. Let's see about the motor. No. So it's not getting to the brushes. So it's not getting past the E unit. Um, sometimes if you mess around, oh, there goes. <laughs> it does now. So let me see what I got. Hang on. That seems to have jarred something, tearing it apart. Let's see if it runs. Like a monkey with a E unit and get it to do its job, go right to there, see what happens.
I do find it interesting how similar the designs are. I think oh, this is a pre-war. I believe that was a post-war. That's a 2024. And this is a 224. But the basic design, I don't think has changed much in years. Get a little grease in there. So I thought briefly about changing br brushes, but realized the new ones are, well, the old ones weren't that bad, about the same length. So I took it apart and put some oil and grease in there, about all. And a couple of takeaways, the bushing goes to the outside, right? Um, these are the older ones. And it does have a light holder, so I'm going to have to come up with a, uh, a light for it. You have the wire here. It was disconnected. The light bulb just fell right out. So, if there's a spot. There it is. One of the things I like about this one here, it's got that pin right there that goes all the way across, pins the motor to the front, and then there's a screw up here that holds it from the top. So it's really securely held, but it's also easy to position it. So, I just got to take that push it all the way in and screw it that's all can't do it with one hand on the camera one hand on the screwdriver the only thing I don't like about this design is the handrails they gotta get put through these little holes there and then bent on the other side See them right there but other than that it's pretty straightforward See if we can get it together and make it run. Got this longer screw that goes in up top. But I like that pin. Alright, let's put the rest of this stuff together. Well, there's definitely a a right and a left to these guys right here and it's best to have some way of suspending the locomotive that way to work on it because that little bell down there that thing is op not operational but it's a little sheet metal stamping and it moves you don't want to crush it by laying it on its top but uh, I got to get these through the holes bend them over I put the screws in here and here. They're two and they're they're a little bit longer. That's how you can tell. And then you have four short screws. One, two, and then three and four back there. But uh, we just finished putting it together. Takeaways are these are really easy to work on. They really are. Yeah, and these... Um, the valve rods right there there's little pins at the bottom of that let me see if i can show you with one of these ones where is it see how they have those pins little ray section at the bottom that's how they're timed so you want to time it to where when the, the, the where it's mounted is furthest back is rotated to where that's furthest forward and will fit into the pin. So it's right there. Like that. 
then they got these really long screws that you put on to hold it all together. Which I think is kind of cool. Let me just get it where it's connected first. Get that screw started. Once it's started, then I'll find the, the pin location. There it is. It goes that way. This comes back. It's hard to it's hard to mess it up. And of course I've got to put the screw on top. It's one of these special shouldered screws. put the camera down and when it's all together it should do this and not interfere anything let me get the other side let's see if I can get a look at that uh, little slot see it in the wheel well, my ugly old finger. And that's how you time it. I'm supposed to be putting a top end on that saw and replacing a bearing in this one. I have to split the cases. That's kind of what we do. I don't feel like doing it today. I feel like messing with the trains. That thing's all bent up. I attempted to put the torch to it. But let me just see if it'll bend without cracking. I'm a little nervous about it, but we'll see. It bends easy. But I don't know if it's going to stay that way. Unless I get a little heat on it. Oop. So to close off this portion of the video, I'm just going to run this a little bit. See if it runs. Got the... Uh, drive gear put back on it. Then I have to wait for some parts to finish it off. The rear truck just crumbled when I tried to straighten it. In the front truck, it's missing the uh, the light holder. And once I get those two things, we'll finish this one off. But I wanted to have something go today, right? And then um, just a little side note. This 8606, I think they're a little bit of a sleeper. It was a uh, U.S. built train by Lionel after the MPC era. It was after it was bought out by a big real estate uh, developer and before Neil Young and that crew got in there in the 90s. And uh, they were trying to get the brand started. So they started making some pretty, I think, uh, nice offerings. This is one. This is a sleeper for me can motor but it has the same type of a detail as say these do you know and it's a die cast shell similar to the 2018 2026 in uh, these as well I mean it's not the same casting obviously but it's similar and they run good it's got a can motor instead of the older style but uh, like the trucks are the same as these. Not sure how much interchange is. I don't think much does. But the point is, 
for an 027 offering from 1989. I think that's a pretty nice one. So anyway, let's see if it runs. All right, let's see if we can get the E unit to work. That runs really nice, really smooth. There it goes. So it runs pretty good. Very, very smooth. Very smooth. And uh, I contemplated changing out the brushes, but didn't have to because the ones that were in there were darn near the same length as a brand new set. So it just got lubed and cleaned. And that's what we got. So not totally done yet. We're going to train Z on eBay to get parts. Seems like that's one of the most um, reliable places to find parts these old things but you know I kind of like the 224 even more than uh, the other 027 offerings of the era well this is in the 50s and I think the larger drive wheels is the difference for me you know So that represents the 1940s, 50s, 60s, 1980s. I guess that spanned many, many years, not just the, the 60s. What about that one right there? Now, I think uh, they're all cool, don't get me wrong. But I think this one here is a sleeper. Because it has all the cosmetic charm as, as these. But it has a can motor. And it runs really smooth. So. They will all get plenty of run time. And I believe that was made for one year. I don't know how many years it was in the catalog. The only years I can find it is 1989. I think that makes it a little bit unique. You know, it was still a U.S. built model as well. It hadn't been shipped overseas. There was a period where a bunch of them were made in Mexico. And then, of course, the current ones are made in China. So having a U.S. built Lionel, I don't know little esoteric I guess but I think it's interesting now on these 027 Lionel diecast locomotives one of the things I like about the uh, 1989 8606 right here is they've returned to having that uh, valve timing rod there the drive rod in addition to this little one right here much like the old 224 look at that where these are cool but they don't have that extra rod on the low cost 
die cast locomotives. So anyway. We got another one right here. Yeah, both of these are MTH models, you know, the 027 stuff. And I think we're going to let the ski race come to an end. This is one of the later ones. I'm not sure if it's 
Proto 2 or 3, but it's uh, later than a Proto 1. And that's a Proto Sound 1. And uh, I've had pretty good luck with the early MTH on the old Lionel Transformers, the conventional Transformers. This one here, I got a stab at the uh, the direction button, and basically what's happening.